Welcome to the first and only Founders Fire Chat, featured on LinkedIn, where we help SaaS founders solve growth and revenue problems. Let's get started. First, let's go over the agenda. We'll do brief speaker introductions, followed by Q&A with today's guests, and then we'll wrap up with next steps. SaaS Growth Ventures focuses on investing in and scaling revenue for capital efficient SaaS companies. We're selective and invest specifically in companies where we have a positive impact on a startup's revenue growth and increased startup valuations. My name is Thor Wood, and I'm the found, uh, founder of Snapship and also entrepreneur in residence. And with me today is Artem Ghassan, general partner at SaaS Growth Ventures. He's a 10-time Ironman, four-time founder with two exits, and he's a mentor at 500 Startups and Founder Institute. And Artem has invested and scaled in dozens of SaaS companies to date. Oh, are you switching to me? Yes. Thank you, Thor. That's a, a great introduction. Uh, just to share a little bit about myself. So as Thor mentioned, I've been a founder four times uh, with two exits, grown in scale revenue from zero to five and $10 million AR, and help over 50 portfolio companies to scale their revenue using my methodology, process, and systems. So I typically invest in companies that wanted to penetrate the US market as fast as they can. And obviously in a market that is a fragmented, hard to acquire the customers and find to find, hard to find them. And my superpower is solving growth and revenue problems is my deep passion. Thanks, Artem. That's awesome. So today I am honored to introduce two amazingly talented people. We have Jenny Vance, the Chief Revenue Officer at Curvo Labs. And we have William Birdsong, founder and CEO at Documentor. So let's hear from the founders themselves. William, could you tell us about yourself and your company in two minutes? Thanks for having me, Thor. I am William Birdsong, founder and CEO of Documenter. Uh, what we do is we provide visit verification software and an end to end solution for the home healthcare industry. We focus particularly on agencies serving people with developmental and physical disabilities. Uh, and we help with compliance, we help with streamlining processes, and overall, we help the customers that we serve provide a better level of care to individuals who need it the most. Um, started this company back in 2017 off of seeing a problem with paper in the home healthcare industry, um, and it is ballooned into so many other things, and we're just happy to be able to, to help. Uh, and that's a documentary in our uh, two minute nutshell. Awesome, thank you. And how about you, Jenny, in two minutes, uh, tell us about yourself and Curvo. Sure. So I am the Chief Revenue Officer at Curvo, and Curvo is a software and a data company focused on providing solutions to supply chain teams in healthcare so that they can be more clinically integrated and relate to their clinicians with information and data that they can trust, applications that speed processes and visualizations that answer important questions. But our whole goal with our technology solutions to customers is to help make a dent in the cost of healthcare. So outside of that, I'm a very passionate revenue leader. I am a multiple time founder and, uh, and revenue leader for other SaaS businesses. I have a particular passion for helping companies scale from founder led to some scalable, provable sales processes and success. So that's where I've focused. Um, I have a unique background prior to jumping into an executive role within SaaS, having been a founder for a B2B lead generation agency and through that experience, we worked with about 350 different B2B companies on their go-to-market approach and everything from Fortune 50 companies to companies that were so early stage that they hadn't received their first round of angel funding and were still in idea phase and everything in between. So very passionate about helping companies with their go-to-market. That's awesome and, and very noble on the uh, healthcare side because we know how outrageous uh, that has been for a long time now. So thank you both 
uh, for sharing a little bit about what you're working on. Uh, and I want to go ahead and share here. We'll dive right in. So now let's look at the issues that a lot of founders are facing today, because there are some important trends to keep in mind. Most founders know how to build products, but they struggle building predictable and scalable revenue past their initial success. And at the same time, most VCs overlook companies that are not growing fast enough. And lastly, founders have access to capital, but they lack a predictable growth engine. And the fact is almost 70% of early stage SaaS companies will not get beyond a Series A round of funding. So looking a bit deeper into the problem, more often than not, most startups concentrate on creating a business model, but they ignore the importance of the revenue model. And startups face their demise when they're spending too much time searching for investors and neglecting the pipeline building, uh, revenue building, and establishing a trust factor with customers. And most startups market their products, but they stop right there, overlooking necessary sales execution. And with that, let's dive into today's fire chat topic how to deliver value without selling. We'll start our discussion with three questions. First, what challenges are you facing when it comes to acquiring new customers? Next, what go-to-market strategy are you currently utilizing to grow your revenue and customer base? And last, what methods do you use today to demonstrate the value that you deliver to your customers? Let's start with you, William. What challenges are you facing today when it comes to acquiring new customers? That is a great question. Number one, I would say in healthcare in general, it's a lot of competition, right? So when you talk to people, they say, oh, how do you differentiate yourself, right? So in my industry, particularly, nobody has any real proprietary technology, right? So I have to focus on making sure I can provide some type of value that's going to make the customer stay with me a long time. Um, so I would say my biggest challenges are building trust because it's a lot, it's not a sell. It's a, I have to build a relationship with these people to show them why they should work with me. So um, it's, a, it's a patience thing for me. I wish it could happen overnight, but you know, we're really focused on giving our customers some value uh, or our potential customers some value. So it's just a long sell, man. And that's a, that's a struggle for me uh, because I, you know, as a owner founder, you like to see things happen quickly, especially the revenue going up, but it, it takes time. And that's, it's hard for me. Great. Thank you for sharing William. So help me understand um, what kind of value, what kind of value factors are you currently focusing on to relate your differentiator factors to your future and current customers? Well, right now, I think we do something really special. We give away our first contact with anybody who comes in contact with us as a potential customer is a giveaway of an audit tool that they can assess within their agency. They can do it on their own time that tells them compliance-wise where they are. Um, this number one builds trust if they use it and like it if they don't they give us feedback so it starts a conversation uh so that number one is, is something that we're really focusing on giving people things that can help them and in turn starts a conversation in, in one way or another got it so what you described to me it's more um a hook that you provide to your potential customer a hook designed to demonstrate an aha moment or partial aha moment of how your product can fit their value or what whatnot. But in terms of the value, like what, how do you differentiate? Uh, that's a, a bit more different question. Is it is it speed? Is it the quality? Is the service? What is your competitive differentiator that helps them better relate when it comes to offering? Why they choose you versus someone else? I love that question. It's the experience. It's not, we don't sell features because if we sold features, we would lose immediately because we can't compete 
with the biggest customers, right? We can't sell speed, as you say, because everybody can make something that moves snappily quick, right? So what is the, the hook? And it's the experience. For documenters specifically, it's the simplicity. These people are busy. They don't have time to set up and train and do all these other things. So we are, and I, I hope this is a true quote, we're one of the only self-serve, self-set up uh, EVV tools in the industry. Um, and that's because we realize these people don't have time for long conversations or for you to come out on site and take three days to train them. If they can grab my tool and set themselves up in one hour um, and be ready to go and compliant, to me, that's a, a, a kind of a game changer. Uh, I don't know why people aren't doing that, but you know, we focus on helping make this provider's life easier. Um, and that is my, my main focus. And in doing that, <laughs> it, it, it sets us apart from other people who say, here's our tool, our product, we've been doing this for 10 years, use it as is, um, as opposed to you know, taking a different approach and mindset to what does this customer or potential customer actually need from you? Got it. So what is the ultimate outcomes that the customer gain from your solution in this case? Number one, compliance, right? And ever, since January 1st of this year, everybody has to have something that monitors EVV. And what EVV is, is did the caregiver provide the right service to the right person at the right time? So we timestamp that location um, and we send that information to the state or the Fed so they can be compliant. And then when they send in their billing, they can get paid <laughs> for the service that they provide. So that's the number one value we give to our customers. You get paid, you get paid quickly. Um, and if you don't get paid, we tell you exactly why. So you can fix it. Great. Thanks for sharing. Awesome. Awesome, William. Uh, and great feedback, Artem. Uh, how about you, uh, Jenny? What, what challenges are, are you facing uh, today at Curvo when it comes to acquiring new customers? Yeah, I mean, in healthcare, it is, it, it's an interesting market right now with the pandemic and um, which environments were hit really fiscally hard versus others. And so the value proposition has to be incredibly strong to establish urgency and um, know confidently that we can help. I'm really proud that Curvo does have a strong value proposition around savings, which is a pretty important message right now, um, especially giving purchasing power and self-reliance back to hospitals and providers specifically who have maybe relied on savings through their GPO relationships in the past now are um, needing an unbiased perspective into savings because they just have to focus on their fiscal performance. Um, I'd say other challenges, just as a, a company that's growing and we're introducing new product and uh, that balance between very tight buttoned up use cases versus visionary platform potential, um, how to position that message so it resonates, how to position it with certain audiences. That's where we're focused right now and, and trying to kind of add processes to get even better because there are a lot of ways we can help. So you want to be able to come to the table, help a customer, figure out how you can help best, focus on those areas of the solution, but not, uh, it, it, it's always a little scary to go in with, with one point solution when there are lots of ways you can help. So I think that's um, something we're working on pretty aggressively right now. And how are you trying to solve those issues? Well, I think part of it is getting some outside input, um, making sure that we take uh, a good temperature check of the market. We look at how the competition is handling that, and then we get some outside input. We, at our stage right now, are hiring for product marketing, but we haven't had product marketing in-house. So we've relied on some partners that can help us um, position our solution and, and help tell that story um, and, uh, and be able to test that in the market. I think that's part of startup life is that at all of these scale points, we're constantly iterating. So we have to stay somewhat agile and we have to be willing to go out and get customer input to be part of the process before we uh, put our chips on the table with a particular strategy. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Stand by one second here.
All right, William, what go-to-market strategy are you currently utilizing to grow your revenue and your customers? I love that question because revenue is everything right now for me, you know, outside of raising money, as you, you noted earlier, it takes so much time. <laughs> we have to grow revenue. Um, what we realized is in our business, you know, people have to know you, they have to want to talk to you, but they do open their email. Um, so we found really creative ways uh, to reach customers uh, via drip campaigns, giving them again, kind of like that value content um, in important things that they can use in their day-to-day -day life that then helps them engage with us. Um, and once they engage with us and start the conversation, for instance, I think in the last 60 days, we've closed anybody who's had a demo with us, we've closed 60% of those. Um, so uh, drip campaigns are really, really productive and it's, you know, automating them, right? Like we, I can't, I started off <laughs> this time last year, I was sending individual one-on-one -on -one emails to people saying, hey, there's this little tool I'd like you to try um, to, you know, 1000 times uh, across the country, automating a process that gives people uh, a reason to want to contact you and want to know more. Uh, and then once we show them the product, you know, we're, we're closing at a, at a pretty good rate. So that's been our, our strategy that we've been working on. Uh, scaling has been working relatively well. And I will also say we have uh, put out market specific content. So if we're working in Ohio, you can go to Ohio specific landing page and learn about what documenter offers in Ohio. If you're in Las Vegas, you can go to Nevada specific page and learn about what documenter offers in that area. So uh, we try to understand the markets that we work in very well. Um, so they understand we're not, we're, we're different than everybody else. You with us, Artem? Yeah, I have no feedback here. <laughs> that's just good stuff. I hope that's a go good thing, right? I would say so. If if Artem's, um, you know, uh, short and to the point, I, I or or just kind of in awe. So that's good stuff. How about you, uh, Jenny? Uh, you know, in terms of. Um, uh, the go-to-market strategy, what are you guys currently utilizing to grow that revenue and that customer base? Yeah, I would say at the high level right now, we're using a sales-led growth um, mindset with a lean towards product-led growth. So we have some entry-level products that are going to position us to make a shift to product-led growth over time, but right now it's still very sales-driven. One of the things that's been a shift for us in our go-to-market approach over the last year from a revenue perspective is figuring out, especially in an industry that was hurting, how could we start by helping? And the best way to think about our content and everything that would drive all of our different channels and engines of communication would be to think of something and content that our customers need first. So a very customer first mindset into how do we take that story and then go tell it through our marketing channels more effectively. Um, and that has worked really, really well for us. We found that one of the best things from a content curation perspective is that we really used a webinar and a customer-driven webinar using our client success team to garner interest from our customer success calls and use those to drive a webinar content piece um, that we could then also market as a support to customer or to per prospective customers. And then we take that and we turn some of the outcomes from that into blog material and content material. And then we repurpose both the webinar and different snippets from that webinar and different content elements back out into our other channels um, to continue to garner engagement and interest. So that's been really effective for us in that top funnel MQL generation that then our SDR team and our sales team can begin to take action on. And since we've done that, it took about, in an enterprise sales model, a six-month time period where we've really refined that since last summer. 
And we've seen a really big gain in terms of pipeline creation, even this quarter. So uh, from marketing contributions specifically across all those channels, where in the past, I feel like uh, most of our strong MQL conversion was really reliant on events. Um, in Q4 and in Q1, we didn't have a lot of events. So all of that marketing conversion is coming from webinars um, that are customer driven and customer focused need that we then kind of pivot into all different types of communications throughout our marketing channels and it's been working really well so far well congratulations yeah thank Seems you like everything went very well for you well there are always challenges <laughs> on to the next so um but it, it's fun to see some gains made there we have a a small but mighty marketing effort right now we get a lot done but really you know have uh, only one dedicated headcount and the rest were um fulfilling through partnerships at this point so it's a lot to get done with with that one individual really proud of all of the efforts that she's put in excellent yeah All right, William, what methods are you using today to demonstrate the value that you deliver to your customers? That is a very good question. And that's one that I don't, that is ongoing, right? We're always trying to, to, to demonstrate value, but what methods are we using? You know, it's a good question. We regularly talk to our customer, right? And I wouldn't even call this anything formal, but like we literally, everybody who signs on with us, we do a, a, a jobs interview, right? And we want to know why is it that you hired documentary and what is it that you need from us? And then we just take that feedback and not that we do everything that every customer says, but we do take every point serious, right? So it's not necessarily a method, but it's what we do to understand what people are signing on early need. And then we touch base like literally once a month, um, an optional call for our customers to join and have a gripe session. If you hate us, tell us what you love. But we want to know. We don't want someone sitting angrily for three months with a product that they hate and we don't know. So we give them the opportunity to talk to us regularly. Uh, and I would, would be proud to say we act on a lot of that stuff. It's made us a better product since December. Uh, so that's, you know, we, we really try to stay in tune with what it is that our customer needs, what they love about our product. And especially, uh, I want to know what they hate about it because if one person hates it, there's probably a handful of others, so maybe we can accommodate. Can you elaborate more? What's your way of getting the customer feedback? What process do you use? What framework did you use? What questions did you ask them? How did you get their feedback? Which one is mm -hmm. valid feedback versus, you know, uh, less important to build features to build? <laughs> Sure. We we literally use the jobs to be done theory, right? Like I'm a big believer. And if you haven't read Demand Side Sell, please go read it. Like it, it literally changed my outlook on how to talk to the customer. So it is literally, it feels like an informal conversation with the customer, but we get so much value. I wish I had my papers to show you. I look like a mad scientist taking all my notes. Uh, but we're literally going back to the moment when you decided that you needed to make a change from either the system that you were using um, and then we're documenting that. And then ultimately that's what we're building our product around. We take, you know, probably a hundred interviews today, right? And then we find those common themes and we built around what those common themes are. So I think it, it really all go back, goes back to the customer, if that makes sense. Excellent. Thank you. Very good, William. I like that approach. Always talk to the customer. That's that's a golden rule. How about uh, how about you, Jenny? What what methods uh, are you using today to demonstrate that value uh, that you're delivering to your customers? Yeah, you know, one of the things I didn't talk about earlier from a challenge perspective is that you know some of Curvo's differentiated value is very kind of 
it feels a little behind the curtain because it's this abstract quality of data. And so how that manifests when people are being sold on really pretty visualizations from other competitors and ours is it doesn't matter how pretty the visualization is if the data that's being served up to you isn't reliable. And so what tools and ways can we show that? And really the easiest way for us to show that is to just go help in some of our customers' data. And be able to, the more that our customers are actually in the data and using it as comparisons, the easier they can sh see the differences in quality very, very quickly. So for us, it's putting data to the test. There are a few ways we do that with um, some of our uh, more accessible products. It's um, as simple as running a quick file that gets matched um, for some of our more complex sales wins, where we're talking about multiple parts of our solution coming to the table for a customer. Then and it operates a lot more like a proof of concept where we're taking in a major component of their spend. Um, we are using a subset of it. And then we use that to come back and present through our software with their live data. And that goes a long way in the, the confidence in the ROI. It's not just a promise anymore. We can see the exact ROI path that we would use. And we can highlight some of the areas of differentiation that they can look for across other platforms and challenge with during the sales process to really understand the value and importance of this data quality behind the scenes. And that's where Curvo has a lot of intellectual property and where we have to take the conversation in order to consistently win. Excellent, great progress. Now that's that's good stuff from both of you, uh, and of course Artem. Uh, but uh, I really like hearing, uh, you know, it, it's in depth, and and for a lot of people it, it can be heavy. Um, and it's great to see how you're approaching, you know, delivering the value without selling the solid insights, uh, you know, acquisition, revenue growth, value delivery. Um, and I'm going to transition here. All right. So today we learned how to streamline the sales process and acquire new customers faster. We discussed different go-to-market strategies, and we talked about different methods of how to demonstrate value to your customers. To close things out, thank you uh, greatly. Thank you uh, to today's panel for being a part of Founders Fire Chat. I will be uh, personally following up with an email with introductions to each of you and also provide the fully edited episode uh, with highlights from today's Fire Chat uh, discussion so you can maybe share it on social networks or with other SaaS founders uh, that might be uh, you know, on that path at that stage. And of course, if you have suggestions uh, on how we can improve you know, forthcoming Founders Fire Chat episodes, Please do let me know. Your feedback is valued. Suggestions are always welcome. And we look to provide as much value to the founders as possible. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed today's Founders Fire Chat. This show exists for and because of you. So please click the like or insightful button and share the Founders Fire Chat on LinkedIn or Facebook. And let's work together in developing the community and setting new SaaS global standards. My name is Thor Wood founder of Snapshift, and entrepreneur in residence with SaaS Growth Ventures. If you would like to be a part of Founders Fire Chat, please send me an email at thor at sasgrowthventures.com or DM me on LinkedIn. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.